In this video, I want to prove that the limit exists using epsilon and delta. And the limit we're looking at is the limit as x approaches 5 of 3x plus 2. We're going to use epsilon and delta to show that this limit really does equal 17. So when you start off an epsilon and delta argument like this, you definitely want to identify all of the important parts. And here I've highlighted them just to make it a little bit easier. You want to identify the x values that you're approaching, your function that you're using, and the limit you are trying to prove. These will be key components in the definition of a limit. We'll get more with that epsilon and delta in just a bit, but definitely identify your a, your function, and the limit. So since we are trying to prove that the limit exists, we have to show that the definition is satisfied. So basically, in a nutshell, I have to show that there exists a delta for every epsilon greater than zero, such that when my x's are approaching five, uh, if they're within delta, that forces my function, as it approaches 17, to be within epsilon. If you had to look at this more graphically, here's basically what we're trying to do. If someone were to come along and give us a threshold around 17, then I should be able to use some sort of threshold around 5 and know how close I need to be in order to get values that are around 17. So it's like if someone's going to give me an epsilon, I need a delta that uh, gives me some tolerance around 5. Now, the actual process for going about this uh, looks a lot like trying to solve an inequality. Because what we'll do is we'll start essentially with this part of the proof, uh, our function as it's approaching 17, and we'll try and work backwards to figure out how close to 5 we need to get. And then from there, we'll choose our delta. So even though there's a lot going on, we're going to start with this end of it, work backwards to figure out what delta is, and then you can basically uh, write down all of the steps from there and have your proof. All right, so in order to figure out what delta is, uh, I assume that epsilon has already been given. So I have my function minus my supposed limit less than epsilon. And you basically want to start working with this and solve for x. So the first thing I'm doing is just breaking down these absolute values. So now I know that this inside part is between negative epsilon and epsilon. I can do a little bit of simplifying since I have a plus 2 and a minus 17. That'd give me a minus 15. All right. Now I want to keep working to get this x all alone. So let's go ahead and add a 15 to both sides. All right, it's looking pretty good. Uh, now let's go ahead and divide everything by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, minus epsilon over 3 is less than x, is less than epsilon over 3, plus 5. So you can see that we've essentially solved for x, uh, but we're, we're actually just getting closer to the other side of that definition. So what we're trying to build is this guy. And we're almost there. Notice how this has an x minus 5? Well, we're going to try and work that into our problem and then package it back up using these absolute values. So to make it match better, I will subtract 5 from everything. So I'll subtract 5 from this side. I'll have my x minus 5. Then we'll subtract 5 from this side. So I know that x minus 5 must be between a negative epsilon over 3 and an epsilon over 3. I can use my absolute values to package this guy up. So I know that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 3. So you can see we've started with the right uh, side of that definition, and we've actually built now the left side. The important part about doing this is we've actually discovered what we need to make our delta. It's this value right here. So the last part of this is actually writing out the proof now that we know our delta.
So to do that, we start off with this terminology. We say, let epsilon greater than zero be given to us. Then we need to choose delta to be epsilon over three. Now, what I'm basically going to show in the rest of this is the same exact steps, but I'm showing that whenever my x minus five, that absolute value is less than epsilon, that it really does force my function uh, to be within uh, epsilon of 17. So these are gonna look exactly the same as the steps we had before, just written in the reverse order. So I'm breaking apart my absolute value. Uh, maybe add five to everything. Then we'll go ahead and work to package this by multiplying everything by three. There we go, looking better. Subtract a 15 from everything. And of course, use our absolute values. Now that doesn't quite look like what we started with, but let's do one more step. So that was 3x plus 2 minus a 17 less than epsilon. So this basically shows that if someone runs along and gives me an epsilon, then I know exactly how to choose my delta. I'll choose it to be epsilon over 3. And that when I make that choice, that you know if I'm within that threshold of, for x's as I get close to 5, that this will basically force my function to be within epsilon of 17. That's what all of the rest of this work shows, is that it's forcing my function to be within epsilon of 17. So since the uh, definition of a limit is satisfied, I can say that the limit as x approaches 5 of my function really does equal a 17.